The purpose of this video is to make you stop needing to watch another video about the topic of sheet metal in SOLIDWORKS. We're gonna take it slow, but we're gonna take it fundamental so you understand everything a little bit deeper, not just only about the sheet metal module in SOLIDWORKS, but about the sheet metal designing in general. I'm not a sheet metal expert myself, but I can still pass you a lot of fundamental knowledge that I have, as well as giving you a little bit of do's and don'ts and uh, guidelines on how to work with the sheet metal modules and tools in SOLIDWORKS. So be patient, listen carefully. After this video, everything is gonna make sense for you. And after that, it's gonna be downhill from there. So if you just bear with me for like four or five minutes, the rest will be a breeze. Let's begin. If you look at my screen here, you see almost two identical parts. I didn't spend like forever to just make him absolutely identical in everything. Doesn't matter, you get the concept. My question to you is, what's the main difference between these two components, assuming they have the same material and same dimensions? Well, I will tell you what. The answer to this question defines the meaning of sheet metal and why you even need that in SOLIDWORKS. What's the difference between a sheet metal component and a solid body in SOLIDWORKS? So the right component in a little bit of a darker color is made with solid body designs. As you can see, boss extrude and two flex to just bend it 90 degrees at two ends. And on the left, we have the yellow component that is made with sheet metal, okay? So the main reason the sheet metal module exists in SOLIDWORKS is that sheet metal in reality in production and in manufacturing is a very, very convenient manufacturing method. And it just reduces the cost for a lot of the complex components that can just be made from bending one flat sheet of metal. And even though you can just achieve the same with the solid body design tools like Extrude Boss and Flex, it's not exactly the same. For one reason, when you are done with your sheet metal design, you should be able to have it in the flat mode like this. So you could send the flat design to your manufacturer to cut it and you define these bending lines for them. So they know where the bending lines are and how the sheet should be bent into the final form that you desire. But with the solid body design, we don't have that option. That's just tip of the iceberg of one of the reasons. And the other tools that the sheet metal module offers, which we will get into details in a sec, I'm just talking about the sheet metal, why we need it, and make it much easier to keep adding other stuff like flanges, corners, you name it, forming tools, add louvers. You have seen these boxes outside like a post box or anything like this or your computer case. These are all forming tools. If you want to sit down and work with solid body tools to make this, it will take considerably longer. You cannot have the flat form. You cannot create the final drawing. You cannot create the bend table that you would need in your drawing to send to your manufacturer. So in general, General, even though it is possible to make that final form with the solid body tools in SOLIDWORKS using feature tap tools, you should not do this. And sheet metal is very, very much demanded. It has a very high demand in the industry. And if you know that, the chances of you landing a job or improving the job that you have, upgrading yourself and career boosts up. I said boost in a funny way. Anyways, let's begin. I'm gonna ignore this wrong component here and let's begin with sheet metal. Now we're gonna take it slow. Let's go. All right, now that you understand why the sheet metal module exists in SOLIDWORKS, why we need it, the difference between a sheet metal component and a solid body component, now let's take our time and go slowly into this tab in a way that makes sense for you. All right, let's go. Okay, this is a sheet metal component and I will show you the platform at the end and I will give you some stuff. There are four ways. Let's just start by opening a blank canvas. Okay, to start creating a sheet metal component, there are four ways to create a sheet metal component in SOLIDWORKS. Some of these ways are there to create something from scratch from a 2D sketch, just like a solid body. Actually, it's very close to solid body in a lot of ways. And a lot of the tools that you can use for the solid body, like extruded cut, can apply to a sheet metal as well. Some are common, some are are unique. Anyways, and from these four methods, some are meant to create a 2D sketch into a sheet metal and some are there to convert an already created 3D object from a solid body into a sheet metal. We will cover them both. And if you are planning to take the CSWPA-SM, which is the Certified SOLIDWORKS Professional Sheet Metal Certificate from SOLIDWORKS, you would need to learn both, all right? But one thing after each other. Right now, we're gonna start with the first method first, which is the base flange or tab. And for that, 
have, we would need to have a 2D sketch. My 2D sketch in this case will be a rectangle and the dimensions of it, just for the sake of knowing what we're dealing with, 100 by, let's just say 70, all right? Now we could go to the sheet metal tab and convert this to a sheet metal before I click okay, bear with me. The very first settings that you set here will set the default for the rest of your sheet metal design. You can come back and edit that at a later time, but I would recommend you to just take your time with it, define the values you wanna define here so there won't be any surprises further down the line, okay? Just like always, I'm gonna close all these sections in the property manager of the sheet metal. Oh, this one doesn't close, I don't know why, yeah, that's true. And auto relief, and this one. So we have sheet metal parameters, sheet metal gauges, parameters again, and bend allowance, auto relief. Let's start from the top and ignore that, ignore the second one as well. What we need is the third one, sheet metal parameters, the thickness of your sheet. This is set on two millimeters. If you wanna work with inches, that's okay too. The thickness of the sheet metal that we set here sets the rule for the rest of the design as I said. So let's just keep it at two, doesn't matter. If I select symmetric, it would just set my sketch in the middle. It's kind of like mid plane in extrude or I can do a reverse direction, okay? We don't work with that. K factor, it's interesting. It's a very advanced topic, if I'm honest, and it is included in the CSWPA-SM exam. However, my experience tells me that it, you need to be really into sheet metal design to understand this. Many of the people that I have worked with, they work with bend allowance. They just work with a bend allowance that shows the smallest radius of bend that you can apply in this design. But K factor is also there and is included in your exam. Just so you know, K factor can be defined here. Maybe the exam tells you to set it to 0.5. You do it here. We are gonna just leave it at the default settings of 0.32 on K factor and click OK. Now, this is the sheet that we have, uh, 100 by 70 with a thickness of two, and we have created one folder of sheet metal in the design tree. If you wanna change the default setting that we just set here, all we have to do is to right click here, edit feature, we come back to the same page, and we can change the radius and the thickness of the uh, sheet metal. The radius is set at 0.2, let's just increase it to one. This is the minimum radius that we can have on the bend. Now we will talk about when the bend's coming in, because a sheet metal component always 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 comes from bending and of course some tearing as well and cutting but mostly bending a one flat sheet of metal into a 3d object so this was the first method to create a sheet metal i'm not gonna jump ship and cover method two three and four let's just continue with what we have we will come back and cover those in a later time or you can go to the link in the description below i have already covered that in my course anyways we're gonna go to flanges now how do we continue from here by the way all right let's take a step back and let's just bring this component that I have already prepared. When you are working in real life, if you are a CNC machinist, if you're a sheet metal manufacturer, or if you're going to be one, or work in a company that does that, you always start from a flat 2D sheet of metal, and you're gonna have to end up on the 3D bent component like this, okay? You start from this, which is the flat form, and after bending it from the right locations with the right uh, bend radiuses, you get this. Okay, but knowing what you're gonna end up is not always easy. That's why SolidWorks has introduced this module long time ago, by the way, it's not new, to allow you to create the ideal end goal. You would create the 3D component and then you walk backwards into the flat form. You create the drawing, you give it to the manufacturer and they reverse engineer that to get to what you have designed. So for you, the good news is all you have to do is to just start modeling your end objective. So in this case, I'm going to go to the next section. I'm going to skip the other two tools you see in the sheet metal tab, which are method two and three of converting and creating a sheet metal to edge flange. Let's just click on that. I'm going to click on one side of the sheet metal. And as you can see, this is the preview I get. If I click OK, my sheet will be just bent all the way up, extended. Let's just actually do that and come back and edit it. OK, now this is the state of the sheet. And if I flat it, you can see this is the a line for the bend and we have a bent sheet. And just for the sake of argument, I'm gonna measure the radius on this one, which is one millimeter. The inner bent radius of our sheet is one, which is what we set in the default settings, if you remember. Sheet metal parameters, sheet metal gauges, parameters again, and bend allowance, auto relief. Now let's just edit this feature, see what we can do before we click okay. There are so many parameters to play with and you need to learn almost all of that, especially if you're going to 
take on the CSWPA-SM exam. So this is the property manager. First button here, which is important, allows you to change the width of this flange. If I don't click on it on default, the whole edge that I have selected converts into a sheet and goes up. So that's that. And before I even cover this, I'm going to take it one step behind again and try to select the other edge that I have selected. Look at this. Do you see this dashed line here? This is the top edge of the sheet that I just selected and it goes up. Do you think it would have made any difference if I selected the lower edge? No. Sheet metal looks 3D, but in fact, it's just one sheet. This side, even though I'm able to draw a sketch on it, even though I'm able to use some of the feature tools like extruder cut to cut something out of it, it does not count. The thick the thickness of the sheet metal does not give you one surface to work with. It's not a sheet with six sides. It's a sheet with two sides, the top and the bottom, because it's a sheet. The sides and the thickness of the sheet defines a different thing, defines the strength and the thickness of your sheet. But you do whatever you do to the top or the bottom side of the sheet. You do not apply any louvers to the side of the sheet. Even if it was much thicker, you do not touch that and you cannot do anything about it in SolidWorks. If I go to the edge flange this time and instead of selecting the top edge, I select this lower edge hidden in the back, I get the same result. Look, doesn't matter which side you select. Okay, now that you have got that, let's just click on edit flange profile. You would see a 2D sketch rectangle. It looks fully defined. It is black, but I can still move it. Doesn't matter. I can bring it up to here and click finish. Now, instead of bending this whole sheet, I'm just bending one side of it and I could just apply dimensions to it. In fact, let's just do that. From the side, it's gonna be 15. I would recommend you to just do these steps with me and I might even put this for download for you at the end of the video. Let me just think about it. Now again, I'm gonna edit this. Look what happened here. We have created two dents here. It's, it's not a dent, it's actually a cut. Rectangular cut on side of this flange because if you wanna bend this sheet, you need to have some cuts around it realistically to be able to bend it upwards. Or these cuts could be tears or it could be abrounds different forms. What I mean by that is if I edit this feature, go back to the same menu again and check custom relief type, I will be able to change that to all brown. Look what happens here. Now they are round here. I could just select the ratio, which is a little bit more advanced than my knowledge. I could change the ratio if needs be. But if you ask me why should it be on uh, 0 0.5 and not 0 0.4, that's something that comes from experience of working with sheet metal for years. I don't have that. Or I could just set it to tear. Look, if I select tear and click OK, you do not see an opening. We just cut it as soon with lasers or water jet and then boom, we could bend it upwards. But let's just go back to the same menu again. We're going to spend some time here. Oh, and that's an interesting thing. Tear gives you two options that I can explain to you, but not on this simple design. I just set it to up round and cover the rest. Okay, flangey position. Let's see what happens if we play with these five options. If I click the first option here, it would give me a new parameter, the offset. I could just go out like 10 or even 15 and then go up or the second one was what we selected on default. The third one also gives me an offset. There is a difference with the first one as well, but not in this case. Again, this is a very simple design. The differences between these five options show themselves in in different specific scenarios. I cannot exhibit that here on one example. So you could just play with what you want and get the result that you need. But for now, know that you have these five options and three more here, but this plays with the length of your flangey. Look at this. Goes in. Let's just show it show the sheet metal to you from the side. Look at that. Now we have a tangential side. If I play with it, it goes up the inner tangential or the outer tangential. And this one just plays, look at that. The difference between two is the height. You want to have the 24, which is set here. Let's just put it to 30. So you see what this plays. 30 from here to here or from the bottom of the sheet to there. It matters, okay? If we are defining the outer boundary box of our sheet metal and it has to be 30, you select this option because you want to include the thickness of the bottom sheet as well. If you want the flange itself to be 30, then that's that. You don't have to sit down and uh, reduce the thickness from the 30. Oh, we have two there, so it should be 28. You can, but that's not really wise. If you wanted to have it 30 altogether, select this option and set it to 32 
You could, but why? Just make sure to select the right option. All right, we still have more parameters to play with and that's the angle. You can see that it's set to 90 degrees on default. We could just change that to something bigger or something smaller, depending on what you need. And you almost always have the option to override the default value settings, like the thickness and the inner bend radius of your sheet metal that we defined on the very first step over here. If I don't click anything, it uses the default radius as you can see here. And if I do that, I could change the inner radius. Look, if I just put it to two, this will change here. Maybe I should make it much bigger so you see what happens. Five and set it to 90. Maybe it shows itself better at 90 instead of anything else. 10, one, doesn't make much difference here, but that's the bend radius. Maybe a 20, 20, two. Okay, it didn't show itself on the preview, but you definitely see the difference here. This is a two, I just edit that and use the default. It goes back to one, see what happens here? It gets smaller. So you can override that. A few seconds ago, I said you can override the thickness of the sheet metal, you can't, you can't. You can override the gap of the cut and inner bend radius, almost on every step. Now we have this, that's an edge flange. Let's just play with this edge flange a little bit more and see what we can do. I select one random edge, set it to 60 and leave it there. Okay, now, as you can see, when I select an edge flange, I could just go and start covering all the other tools and they have so many sub tools as well. And each sub tool will give birth to more topics and more details and more teaching. Or I could just take it slow and talk for four hours on this edge flange and whatever you can do with this very one tool. That's the beauty of SolarWorks and that's how deep it gets. So again, if you wanna learn it in more details, link in the description below. I'm gonna even put it on the top right corner in the information button. Click there, go to my website. It's part of my course. Sheet Metal is a module that I offer in my SOLIDWORKS course pro. And if you're serious about learning SOLIDWORKS, not only about Sheet Metal, but everything else, just go through that course. But I'm gonna do my best here. Again, the reason I say I'm gonna take it slow is that even in the CSWPA-SM exam, that doesn't go very deep in the Sheet Metal. You could just study for that for, I don't know, one or two days if you are good enough in SOLIDWORKS and you could pass it. It's not that challenging as long as your base is strong, you're an upper intermediate user. But for that, you even need to learn how to customize this simple edge flange. As you can see, this face is just a simple rectangle. Sometimes it needs to be different. So I'm gonna activate the sketching mode and draw something like this. Let's just say it needs to be like this and like that. Now I have a drawing next to it and I'm gonna go to the sheet metal tab, base flange and add add it to the edge flange like this. It's a customized edge flange. And if I just click on flatten, which is a temporary state, you can see my sheet will look like this. So if I cut my sheet like this and bend it, I'll get this, okay? So you could just do that. You could play with this edge flange. Let's just do more edge flange. Oh, actually let's not play with edge flange anymore. Um, you, you've learned it, okay? Edge flange just gives you all these options like that. Let's just play with a different tool. Let's just say I have this weird geometry here. It's not that weird though. And I wanna bend it from, let's just say I have a line here just to show you very rough like that. I want to bend this sheet about 20 degrees up from this line. The tool for that is sketched bend. I'm gonna select it, bend parameters. And I said 20 degrees. So many parameters to play with, but I'm gonna just gonna go with the default and it's now bent upwards, okay? The corners are sharp. I could just play with the corners, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. This video is already long enough. I'm gonna end this first part here. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're new here. For more, I'm gonna release the next episodes, pick it up where we left off here and continue. But I would just need a couple of days to prepare this. So make sure to practice what I have just taught you with this base flange and edge flange and we have a long way to go believe me if you're good in sheet metal you always have a place in the industry and that's good and one more time this is the link that takes you to this landing page make sure to read this information believe me i'm not just bragging about my course read the reviews 4.9 out of 5 star i know how to teach solidworks if you want to learn it i'm the guy to go to period just go and learn solidworks properly and oof, it has been 31 minutes that i have been talking with this page I need to go to drink something. Make sure to watch my other videos. Thank you for subscribing. I'll be back to, I'll be back to, to oh yeah, I'll be back to make more, uh, the rest of this for you.